Mike Picelli here. Welcome in. For this lesson, I'll be talking about the Beatles recording of I'm Looking Through You that they did in November of 1965. I'm Looking Through You was uh, one of the last songs recorded for their Rubber Soul album. And in late 1965, George Martin was getting very annoyed because the lads were taking so long uh, to record due to them experimenting with new sounds. The Beatles were growing, but George Martin liked the days when an assistant would sit through all the rehearsals and then George Martin would just show up to hit the record button. They worked on I'm Looking Through You uh, on four separate sessions, and they did three completely different versions of it. They took 18 hours of recording over four days, which was longer than any song to date. They started the song on October 24th, and they finished it on November 11th, 1965. The song was written by Paul McCartney in October of 65 uh, in his attic room at the Asher's house on Wimple Street, uh, where he lived since November of 1963 with uh, Jane Asher's family. And the song was written after an argument with Jane Asher. About the song, Paul has said, As is one's want in relationships, you will from time to time argue or not see eye to eye on things. This song I remember particularly as me being disillusioned over her commitment. My whole existence for so long centered around a bachelor life. I've always had a lot of women around, even when I've had a steady girl. I knew it was selfish. It caused a few rows. Jane left me once and went off to Bristol to act. I said, okay, then leave. I'll find someone else. This song was probably related to that romantic episode, and I was seeing through her facade and realizing that it wasn't quite all that it seemed. I'm looking through you, and you're not there. October 24th, 1965, the Beatles are at EMI Studio 2 to record version one of I'm Looking Through You. It was a nine hour session and it took four and a half hours just to get the rhythm section recorded. The lineup for that session was Paul on bass and vocals, John on acoustic guitar, George on electric guitar, and Ringo on drums. Then they overdubbed maracas, bongos, a Hammond organ, Paul double tracked his lead vocal, and John did his uh, background vocals. But November 6th, they decided to do a remake of the song because now Paul had written a bridge for it. Um, they do a six hour session and it's kind of an acoustic version of the song, but they end up deeming that version too fast and frenetic, so it was never used. November 10th, back in the studio, uh, they do four takes and on the fourth take they get it completed. Uh, it was John on acoustic guitar now, Paul on bass, Ringo on drums, and George on tambourine. And that's the rhythm track that you end up hearing on the Rubber Soul album. Now, November 11th was the deadline to complete all the songs for the Rubber Soul album, so the Beatles worked all night on uh, other songs. Then in the morning, which is now November 12th, from 5 to 7 a.m., they did the overdubs on that rhythm track. And it was Paul redoing his lead vocal and then double tracking it, uh, John doing the background harmony vocal, uh, George was on lead guitar noodling during the verses, and Paul's playing that uh, guitar riff at the end of each verse. Uh, Ringo did some stabbing chords on the Hammond organ at the end of each verse, uh, right on top of Paul's lead, uh, lead riff. And Ringo also tapped on a box of matches, uh, a rather haphazard uh, manner that is quite out of beat at times. The song was mixed on uh, November 15th, and it's, it's the messiest uh, mix that you'll probably hear on any Beatles record. Because if you listen about a 118, there's this high pitched squeal that they left in, uh, probably some sort of feedback. John is really out of tune uh, around 153 in the record. And um, Ringo misses his snare drum quite a bit. Uh, sometimes he hits the rim, sometimes he hits the skin. Uh, like I say, it's probably the messiest uh, uh, mix of any of their songs. They never played the song live because they just thought of it as an album track. And uh, it was released in the UK on December 3rd on the Rubber Soul album and on December 6th in the USA. So that's the backstory. Let's get started. John Lennon is playing his Gibson J160E on I'm Looking Through You, and it's capoed at the first fret. Uh, I'll call the chords as if they're in first position, otherwise we're talking about A flat, which the song is in the key of A flat, and that's probably the worst key to be talking about. So you understand what I mean. Uh, on the intro, you can tell it's John Lennon doing the rhythm guitar because of uh, the false starts, which uh, you know John did on a regular basis. So he, he slides into basically a G triad with a D bass, you know, like this. 
and then he's going to go to a D triad. So you hear, and he's not happy with that, so he starts over. And then he's into the song. Now, to play um, a verse, you're going to need these chords. And to continue the intro, you'll need a G. You'll need this C. And you're going to need what I call, a, a, I'm going to call a G2, because it's just a simple four string G like this. You'll need a G over B. an A minor, an E minor voice like this, you're going to need uh, this D chord, you'll need an E minor 7th, you'll need an A suspended, which goes into the A minor. And I believe those are all the chords that'll get you through a verse. Yeah. Okay, so after that part of the intro, uh, the last three measures of the intro, John plays like this. He goes. Then the verse starts. Now, interestingly, when he's playing this G with the, with the D and the G to the C, he lifts up the C and he strums an upbeat and you just hear this actually you'll hear those four strings that's what I'm calling the second G chord so very slowly that's right now usually when John switches chords you know he'll pick up all together and you'll hear open strings but here he's leaving the pinky down and you get that second G so on the verse, it sounds like this. Um, there's that G over B to an A minor. D. into the second verse. Let me do that a little closer up to speed, the verse there, so you get a better feel of it. But see, it's very important that you, you get that extra little G on the way to the uh, full G. So a verse is like this, more up to speed would be... Um, verse 2. Verse 2 is similar. There's just some variations. And again, like I always say, charts and tabs will make it a lot clearer than I can play it or say it. But uh, let's go through verse 2. I'll just play it nice and slow for you. Here's verse 2. Uh, three, four. That time a regular E minor. That time he suspends the D, you know. To that G. Two suspensions that time. 
Got it? Now into the bridge, he stays on the G. And then you hear open. So, going into the bridge. So verse 2 up to speed would be like this. This great rhythm playing by our friend John Lennon. On the bridge, you'll just need a, a C chord, a G chord, and a D suspended to the D. Pretty much a simple eighth note strumming. So a bridge is like this. Three, four. to verse 3, which is very similar. Again, charts and tabs will make it clearer, but I'll play it for you. Here's verse 3. Regular E minor. What I mean by regular is not with that G on top. Uh, start again, Mike. <laughs> 3, 4. time he does do a C he anticipates a C on the end of two going into bridge two so it's like this very slowly catch that again on the end of two you play a C okay bridge two pretty much exactly the same as the other bridge I'll play it for you here bridge two one two three four And then to verse 4 and on the way out, nothing really different, just a few little, you know, uh, variations of the rhythm, like on the fourth measure. So verse 4 is like this. He, he adds that G, adds that G, I should say, on the, on the E minor. Then on the D he goes... Uh, to a G E minor 7th and then for the fade just a simple Oops, <laughs> just a simple. So I can't stress it enough when you're playing that uh, the G chord before you get to the full G, do that simple G very slowly again. I think you got it. 
Again, charts and tabs will make it much more clear, but that's what John played on I'm Looking Through You. George Harrison is playing his Sonic Blue Stratocaster on I'm Looking Through You, and it's, if he's playing through his Vox, you can tell that the, uh, the top boost is all the way cranked up. Um, he's kind of the noodle master on this one in that uh, he just plays some little, you know, licks here and there. You, you don't hear him until the uh, second verse, actually. After you don't sound different, but you have changed, he plays a line and he goes... And there's a lot of vibrato on that A-flat. And, and note, he is playing in the key of A-flat, and maybe that threw him off a little bit, but uh, that's it, so just that first thing. You know. A lot of vibrato, and then you don't hear him again until the bridge, on the bridge, the third, fourth measure of the bridge, you know, he plays. And it's just sliding into the sixth fret there. Um, and then slides down the first fret. And on that E flat suspended, he goes, um, uh, and that's it for what he plays on the bridge. On verse three, on the fourth measure, again on an E flat. So, ba do 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 one. Little line like that. Um, ba da da do. On the B flat minor, he goes, yeah, uh, one. And then on this, it would be a B flat suspended to B flat minor on the. You don't sound. He plays a. And that D would be a, a mistake because that's he's it's the suspension of of B flat first. And then the chord would be B flat minor, but he plays the major third. So that's kind of a that's a flub. You know. Do -do -da -ba -da. He goes. You know. Da, da, da. And that's left in. And then let's see, we don't hear him again until bridge two. On bridge two, um, da, 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 do, do, do. he plays on beat two. Right, that's it. Uh, and then on the fourth measure, he goes, um, just a little lines like that. And again, we don't hear him again until verse four. And on verse four, on the second measure, you know, ba da da do do. He's just kind of noodling on an A flat major triad, kind of like he plays. Uh, it's like one, two, three. It's almost like he was just kind of tuning up, or you know, just noodling and that's in the record but uh charts and tabs that make it even clearer than i could uh, say it or play it but that's what george plays on i'm looking through you paul mccartney is playing his epiphone casino on i'm looking through you and they have the guitar overdriven either with a overdrive device or a fuzz box or even cranked up the amp and you could overdrive the mixing console back in EMI in those days. And he plays uh, the signature riff, but there's, there's three variations of it. Um, after the first verse, it sounds like this. So it's just basically off an A flat chord. And he plays a root of A flat to a double stop. Seventh scale degree of A flat. Sixth scale degree. Fifth scale degree, minor third, major third. So. He does the exact same thing on um, this after the second verse, except he plays it four times. So we hear four. Okay, then he changes it up after the third verse, where he doesn't play the, the root, he just plays two double stops. So the after the third verse, it's... Right? 
right? And then on the very end, when he plays it the, the fourth time, he plays three times like that with the double stop, and then he adds a B note on the top. So the fourth time is like this. Then back to for the fade out. And uh, that's what Paul McCartney does on I'm Looking Through You. Well, I put it together in a sound light so you can see how all the parts fit together. So let's have a look at this. Well, now you've seen how all the guitar parts fit together on I'm Looking Through You. And if you'd like to know them exactly, you can download the charts and tabs at MikePacelli.com. And I really appreciate your consideration in supporting my work that way. And if you would be so kind, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel because that moves me up in the YouTube queue. So have fun playing this great old song. And until next time, I'm Mike Pacelli. Thanks for hanging out with me.